mind as not true friend and whenever and whatever he does it will be only to his own benefit the end will always justify these means once the man chooses the path of corruption then the soul will also fall along it will become corrupted too your mind and soul will never find rest until the day you decide to feed them the truth upon that one may question the best policy that can abolish corruption completely from the face of the earth it is is it capitalism communism socialism communist socialism or democratic socialism the list is endless as we have many variations of several systems in our generation many are still being put into practice to see their effects upon the society and its people we are still experimenting with several policies to see which one would best suit our desires both individually and collectively because the capitalist praise individualism socialists rely more on the human humanism and for the communist it is all about collectivism in the case of capitalism the state has got little control of the daily businesses of people of the people that is why i say that you are left on own and you ought to feed yourself according to your ability you can decide whether to share or keep all the opportunities to yourself while, while your neighbor is suffering to death socialism is the voice of the workers or employees against the mistreatment of their employ employers we stand on the foundations of demanding equality in any sector that involves the working of any of any being humans and animals that includes security and the well-being of each individual both physically mentally and spiritually Remember that I said that freedom cannot be given in small bundles. If you want to take it, then you must take it all and at once without hesitation. Because it is something that belongs to you and not to someone else. Someone else. Individual freedom is not something that can be shared. But in socialism, we are talking about the freedom of many. Communism, which has many similarities to socialism, except that the leader has too much control of the population. And the only voice that can be heard is the voice of the few, the elites. The first aim of communism was to destroy the idea of elitism. But it appears to oppress its own citizens, while the leaders are wearing the crown made of gold. It is beautiful in context, but it is ruled by the few. That means opening the back door to aristocracy, autocracy, monarchy, and oligarchy. These are the outcome when the state is born by an individual with absolute of all. This is better than every single day. The rule of the concept of democracy. Capitalist, because there's only and socialism. The highest desire. I can one thing while we human nature. But I believe in the famous saying that a prudent man should mean whatever he says and say only that which he means. Being forms, formed in words and then followed with action according to beliefs will, which you hold deep inside because deceit or anything that involves self-deception is the source of corruption within an individual. The seat of power. My African leaders have the, a dilemma of clinging too much on power for their own personal gains. That must change in our generation and we cannot expect it to change while standing idle or without us doing anything towards that dilemma. The greatest amongst you is the one who can spot a mistake and then act upon immediately, upon it immediately without leaving it for tomorrow. Since power is a desire just like any other desire out there, I won't be surprised why many of the leaders hate to leave the seat of power. To some of them, it is a dream come true. Rulers like, quote, God bless the king or slash the queen. This dilemma is not only found in the political world, including in many religions too. Where the individual is persuaded to love the stranger, founder, or the prophet of his religion more than he loves his father and family altogether. This seat of power can be found everywhere and it is often hidden behind the curtains when it comes to religious matters. In reality, there is a power struggle in every community, no matter how small it may appear before your senses. At the same time, that does not mean that the evil doings of a tyrant are justified before the people whom is ruling. Humanity must always be placed first, not in the center or at the end, and human rights must be respected in any given environment. Because the dictatorship that destroys everything it touches, instead of constructive, it consider, is considered to be the major sin in humanism. Any leader who clings on power is ready to be considered mean during and after his departure, and there cannot be any song of glory attributed to him that is genuinely coming from the citizens. My philosophy and ideology forbids me to hold firmly on power with two hands. I'll always remain true to myself and pray that the Creator will keep me on the right path of, a governance, of governance. 
My instincts of transformation will do all the magic to keep sure that the population are living well according to their desires and make sure that their standards match up with those of the world. My ideology or ideological reasoning is based on humanism and that is where I wish to rest my mind upon. Nothing more and nothing less. Cure of poverty. I have discussed the matter of corruption and how, it get, and how to get rid of it. Now we are faced with the major, major subject of poverty, the most popular one that is always given a blind eye in every generation. Even Jesus didn't know which side he should be on. Sometimes he praised the poor, the hard workers and the rich. The other time he acted according to the scriptures, like a true communist who wanted everything to be equally divided in the society. According to the scripture, he praised and practiced celib celibacy and then discouraged his apostle to work with a wallet in the pocket. In short, his philosophical thinking was based on simple lifestyle that made sure everyone got something, thus the famous saying of loving one's neighbors as you so love yourself. This was the oldest Jewish belief, even before the miraculous birth of Jesus. In fact, the ideology equally, regardless of their agendas or abilities, then the world would become a better place indeed, which means that those who lack the ability will be taught the necessary skills to make them capable to see the future opportunities passing by. Those fighting against against poverty through against poverty through the implementation of correct education schema. Charity's charge is such a great idea too, but it is useless when left without education. By using the word education here, I'm emphasizing about the mental development of the citizens, aiming for more practicality rather than mere theories that will lead the population nowhere. I condemn charity because every free thing has got its invisible cost attached to it, as it has been mentioned in the previous chapters. The more you expect to take from others, the more you'll become bound to them. Since charity falls in the category of expectations, it cannot be relied upon and it is something that is out of our control. Meaning, we cannot force anyone to give out to charity or predict how much we can gain from a charitable organization. Moreover, those who are controlling these charities cannot be fully trusted to deliver the goods to the needy ones. There's always a compensation in everything. The philosophers of the past and in our generation have long argued that the only way to eliminate poverty is by wanting less, meaning that one ought to quench the desires and try as much as possible to be satisfied with that little which he has at the current moment. The last part is the, of the sentence matters because or just jogging to gain their health back. We are all after the same thing, which is achieving happiness at the end of the day. Because, therefore, the cure of poverty is egalitarianism, increasing the mental capacity of the population and making them see their worth, their worth in life. The latter attribute is essential because it is based on making the population cultivate their willpower daily, those reaching the land of success. Once the population has become aware of the laws of attraction and manifestation, I believe that poverty will become an option instead of a cause. And it seems in our generation that, as it seems in our generation and the past generations, Housing. I've talked about the land and showed how important it is to the society. With the presence of the land comes the importance of history and the subject of geography. It is all about mapping and drawing borders between you and your neighbors, whom you are advised to love as you love yourself. Your neighbor is not only the house next to yours, but that is just on the micro level of things. When we talk on the macro level, your neighbor can be the next country or countries whom we share borders with. I've talked about the several systems that are applied in different parts of the world. Like employment, housing is also politicized too. Those who are living in capitalist states will give you one story, those in a socialist regime will give you another, and those who are living in a communist state, they will also give you another side of their story. Housing goes hand in hand with renting, and when I mention the word rent, you already know that taxation is involved too. Nothing is so beautiful like owning a house. First of all, you'll be free from paying rent weekly or monthly. Secondly, you'll always have peace of mind from both from the noises of the landlords, because you are independent uh, from the financial shortcomings. Since you are part of the society, and the society consists of nature and the people, you are obliged to pay a small amount to the government from the land that you own. The land is a key word here, because it carries both the society and culture. Apart from that, you are free to do as you so wish with your house. That includes decorating and building the house according to desires and taste. It is also the responsibility of the government government institutions to focus on building more houses for its citizens. Those are encouraging the population to buy land and decrease the price of the housing within the nation, meaning that everyone will be capable to afford a house and buy a comfortable